Pasamos al caso de, eh, de Costa Rica y eh, acá tenemos eh, el nuevo gerente eh, de la eh, Compañía eh, Nacional de, de Electricidad, eh, Mar don Marco Acuña. Eh, es una eh, historia eh, impresionante que tenemos en, en Costa Rica eh, porque de verdad el desarrollo del sector eléctrico es un pilar fundamental para la estabilidad del país. Ha sido durante décadas, digamos, eh, un modelo de eh, participación, de cobertura, de eh, políticas eh, que han... Eh, eh, proporcionado al país un sistema excelente de, de producción y de distribución eh, de, la, eh, de la energía y que nunca para de evolucionarse. Entonces, Marco, eh, don Marco Acuña, de verdad contamos os, con su liderazgo para entender mejor a dónde vamos en eh, Costa Rica. Eh, y entonces, adelante. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. And thank you for the invitation. Uh... For us uh, from Costa Rica and Central America. Um, I don't know if you can project my presentation, please. Um, and as Gianluca said, I'm Marco Acuña, CEO of OFICE, which is the state owned uh, utility in Costa Rica. Um, one of them, actually. Uh, This is Grupo ICE, which is what the, the group of companies I, I head or I lead. Um, we have a we have four four companies in, in the group. One is one is ICE, where we have a 65% of a generation, electricity generation in Costa Rica, 100% transmission in Costa Rica, um, 35% distribution, uh, market share and also trading of electricity with Central America uh, customers. Also, we have a, a telecom business uh, with uh, roughly a half of the, of the market share in the country. Uh, telecom business is open in Costa Rica, uh, not, not uh, in, in energy or electricity. That, that's a, that's a mon monopoly, but it's not that monopoly. Let's say there are all other players, players as well. And also we have a uh, business related uh, services, um, providing connectivity, uh, cloud uh, hosting, et cetera. Also we have uh, um, a power and light company, which is a power distribution company with 40% of the market share in the country. Um, and, and, and it is located uh, in, the, in the central valley of the country. Also Raxa, which is a, a technological uh, company providing cloud and connectivity services to companies uh, and also a small, uh, a small company for uh, administrative uh, processes of the other companies. We have, um, uh, we have a, a strong uh, governance uh, framework in the group uh, aligned with OEC, OECD uh, best practices. Uh, Costa Rica is part of OECD. And now, uh, since last year, I think, yes. And uh, we, we have in the group uh, 15,000 uh, people. Um, well, we, we generate uh, 65%, 67% of, of, of electricity in Costa Rica. Um, uh, most, most, of, most of it is uh, renewable, 99% uh, during the year. Also, we have a private generation. Uh, those uh, companies sell the energy to us, and we distribute it, distribute it to uh, throughout the country. And also, other companies uh, has uh, have participation in a distribution market, like 40, uh, 14 percent of the of the market. Also, we trade energy with the rest of uh, Central America. Uh, last year, we exported. 10% of our production of electricity to other countries in the, in the region uh, with uh, an income of uh, uh, more than $50 million. Uh, what, and all that money is uh, uh, shared throughout all the customers. Uh, we don't take any dollar of that. That goes straight to the, to the customers in the country uh, through the generation uh, companies. 
and uh, we have a uh, 1.5 million uh, customers in the in the in the, with that with the two uh, distribution companies. Uh, this is the, our our electricity generation uh, uh, statistics uh, from uh, 2018 uh, to date, and um, if you invest in Costa Rica, you don't have to to be worried about the carbonization because you uh, just being connected in the country, you are using the carbonized electricity. So that's also a possibility is to invest on producing goods in Costa Rica or services, and then you can get that, those benefits instead of importing energy, for example. Uh, and, and our plan is to also expand that decarbonization to the, the rest of the energy matrix, which is uh, electromobility, for example, and industrial processes. And uh, that's what we are looking at right now. Also, we have a, a high quality of uh, the transmission network and uh, also the electricity coverage for the country is above 99%. So you can get energy uh, almost everywhere. And, uh, and that allows us to, to have a, a very important uh, share of imports of uh, uh, electric vehicles. Uh, last year, uh, we have like 50, 30 brands of electric vehicles in the country. And um, one of the favorites uh, is uh, Audi e-tron, for example, <laughs> the most expensive one. Um, that's that's one of of our main um uh, let's say goals uh, to move from electricity carbonization to other uses of uh, energy then we have a uh, um this is kind of um uh, things we are doing or looking uh, to um to have a, a better understanding and implementation in the country in order to have a more sustainable a, a, a energy a, a environment or ecosystem. We have a, a smart grid a, a plants in the country. And that means or, or includes also not only a generation, but distribution, also transmission, uh, industrial process of decarbonization, such as uh, boilers, cooking, and um, uh, heaters, and all of that using using gas or bunker or fuel oil. Uh, we have a, a, a we are enforcing and also supporting the transition in those areas, also electromobility, as I said. Uh, we have several electrical bus buses uh, in a pilot, uh, pilot, uh, pilot project. Also cross-border tr power trading, we are um, strengthening the relationship with other countries and customers uh, in Central America, not only for selling, but for importing electricity uh, if we have the need of doing that. And then we have a, a challenge in tariff modernization. This, um, this is, uh, we need to adapt the, 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 the framework, uh, tariff, electricity uh, uh, tariffs uh, for new um, uh, generation uh, sources of electricity, such as distributed, and also we have a surplus during the, the, the early early hours of the day, or in, in this season, we have a, a lot of rain and we have surplus of electricity. Maybe with more uh, modern uh, tariffs, we can sell it in a discount uh, for customers uh, increasing their demand. And also we have a challenge, which is, uh, and also uh, not, not only for Costa Rica, but, but the, the, the whole world is that you don't. You can sign a contract with Mother Nature, with wind, uh, uh, water, sun, etc., uh, as you can do it with with coal or, or gas. Well, not that is not that true, but now, but in the, um, with Mother Nature, you need to be more wise and have a strong um, model for forecasting in the short term, short short term and long term. So we are working on, on trying to understand the behavior of uh, the sources of energy uh, in the future uh, in order to have um, as, uh, um, security on uh, demand coverage. Um, 
not only uh, related with seasonability, but also with climate change. If we rely only on Mother Nature, we need to be more sophisticated on forecasting, for example. And also we are improving quality and reliability of electricity. We have covered the country with, with network and, and access to electricity. Now our next step is to improve quality and reliability for, um, for um, um, to bring more investment outside the Central Valley, for example. Uh, to have all around the, the country. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Marco Acuna. Uh, as you uh, can see, really, uh, uh, the, the, the predicament that uh, um, Central America is really thriving on innovation uh, is not really uh, um, is not a stereotype. Uh, it's, it's really a true story. Uh, um, in Costa Rica, we see a, a commitment to decarbonization that goes throughout really uh, cutting edge uh, um, policy policies and, uh, uh, and efforts. And thank you very much for your leadership in this respect and uh, uh, also towards uh, an ever-improving uh, business climate. Thank you so much, Mr. Acuna. Uh, and now I turn to our ambassador, uh, our ambassador, uh, Doña Florencia Eugenia Villanova de Von Husen. Uh, and uh, um, certainly El Salvador uh, has become a real estate common staple of our news items over the last couple of years. And uh, thank God, energy has been part of the mix of information that we, we receive from this beautiful country. So we're really excited to have you here uh, with us and hear more about El Salvador. I'm the ambassador, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Massimo. Thank you to all of you for being here, for inviting me to take part in this important event. To show, to show you a little bit about El Salvador, what is El Salvador doing regarding renewable energies? Well, um, we are offering also attractive benefits through the Renewable Energy Incentives Law that our president, Naif Bukele, introduced in this legislation. We are promoting in investments um, in the different uh, kind of renewable energies. Um, the benefits that we are uh, offering is for example, the custom duties exemptions, exemption for the time period of the first 10 years. We already see from Carolina, they have very nice studies about the difference between all of our countries. But um, I think this is very attractive for the German companies that wants to invest in El Salvador. Um, if, if you want to, uh, introduce all your machinery and equipment and materials to, to put your plant there, you are going to be exempted from the taxes. Um, yes, uh, this is a very, very, uh, I think incentive that the other, other countries are also um, offering. Um, we have the income tax exemptions also uh, for a, few, a period of five years um, for if you uh, put a, a plant, uh, greater than 10 megawatts and 10 years period of uh, projects equal or under 10 megawatts. Uh, actually, we are right now in November preparing a, uh, a business delegation trip to El Salvador. And we have uh, one um, German company that is going to, to put up a solar plant energy for about 80 megawatts, more than $100 million uh, uh, soon. So we are preparing this with our colleagues in the embassy and all the authorities in El Salvador. So we are growing uh, in, this, in this issue. We have also uh, developed this legal framework that facilitates and guarantees the protection of the investments uh, in El Salvador because we want to keep our partners uh, safe and, and attract them, attract more investors in, in, in El Salvador. So uh, they will be protected for a period of time of 20 years. So um, I think that's not, not bad. So uh, we have also the national energy policy for the next 30 years. And 
it is focused in the strategic areas like the regulatory modernization, sustainability and energy supply, research, development and innovation, energy security and integration, efficient energy, energy consumption. So therefore we have our National Energy Council uh, doing that. And if you want to have, for example, a bilateral meeting with all these authorities, we are very happy to help you to have this dialogue in a bilateral way, uh, because we know that as an embassy, we are not the experts in all these technical uh, questions you may have, but um, we are happy to, to be there and help you in this. So El Salvador is promoting the investment uh, in energy generation. Uh, you can see uh, what kind of energies and sources we have. Uh, right now we have uh, the, well, the installed capacity uh, 21, you see, we still have a high, a high uh, part of fossil fuels, but uh, we are moving forward. We have more than 86% of our mat energy matrix is already clean. So we are working to expand and increase the production of clean energies. And we hope that very soon we are going to be able to produce 100% of energy, uh, clean energy in El Salvador. So you can see also a very uh, important area for us is the uh, hydroelectric, the photovoltaic. This German company is in the photovoltaic um, uh, sector and also in the wind sector. So geothermal. So what we expect for next year that we are going to increase this production. So um, we are uh, trying to win more partners. And I, I, I will give you also an overview of the distribution, distribution companies that are mandated to subscribe long-term contracts and um, which has also encouraged in power generation. So we have launched international buying processes for long-term contracts up to 20 years subscribed through among private companies. So we have these success stories also in El Salvador from Energia del Pacifico. This is a 355 megawatts project that will be the first power generation plant based on natural gas in Central America with an investment up of $1 billion. And um, it has a contract to supply energy for 20 years and is currently under development. I heard Germany describe a few days ago also a contract in natural gas. So we are very happy about this. So we have also a French company, Nionen. Um, this uh, French power generation company has invested nearly then, then $285 million in a photovoltaic generation uh, project in El Salvador. And soon this German company also so uh, we have also uh, IES Bosforo, a project executed also by IES El Salvador and uh, has 10 power plants, each having a capacity of 10 megawatts, uh, generating a total of solar power from 100 megawatts in El Salvador. So the total investment is about 160 million. So Proesa or soon that we are going to change the name of Proesa, like Invest in El Salvador, will be your strategic partner to make businesses, investment, and um, through Proesa and the, uh, the assistance of our uh, embassy, we are going to help you to prepare a tailored agenda for a visit to El Salvador and give you a specialized support during and after your investment. Um, we are going to help you to generate all the business contacts and support all in the in the procedures required to establish and expand businesses operation in El Salvador in a country. Actually, we are doing these kind of meetings, bilateral meetings with the companies um, before they go to El Salvador. So we are really open and happy to, to help you and to assist you. I'm joined by our council in, in charge for economic promotion, Nestor. May, a few of you have the, the pleasure to talk to, to him yesterday. So I'm very happy. And if you want uh, to have more information 
about making business investments in El Salvador, please uh, come to us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Strongly, uh, on a personal note, I strongly recommend a visit to El Salvador anyhow, but uh, <laughs> um, uh, it's a beautiful country. And uh, uh, thank you very much for highlighting really the success stories, because I think that uh, uh, these stories really talk to uh, um, our uh, public and uh, uh, they are there to uh, testify uh, what actually happens uh, on the ground. Um, so uh, we also now have uh, a contribution from uh, Panama. Um, uh, we have a video from Rosilena Lindo Riggs. Yeah, and uh, um, who couldn't uh, really uh, uh, participate. Uh, you know, the situation nowadays in, in Panama is a bit uh, uh, difficult uh, uh, for a number of reasons, uh, but uh, uh, we've been really uh, a been in touch with uh, the, the um, National Secretariat for Energy um, and also uh, our colleagues from the chamber here uh, mentioned the, the contacts uh, with, uh, with them. And uh, uh, they've been really outstanding in devising uh, policies uh, over, especially over the last couple of years. And we, have, we are happy to hear more in this contribution if it is uh, ready. Thank you. My name is Rosilena Lindo Riggs, Deputy Energy Secretary of Panama, and today I have the pleasure to talk a little bit of what is Panama doing regarding the green hydrogen implementation. We have designed and launched at the beginning of the year the Panama Green Hydrogen Roadmap with the purpose to comply with our national energy transition agenda. And as you see here in the screen, we have designed a full and inclusive energy transition agenda regarding and pushing forward the digitalization, decarbonization um, of the energy matrix, taking into consideration what we have to do to achieve universal access to energy, what we have to do to achieve rational and efficient energy use uh, of our resources, but also including and supporting this agenda with electromobility, with uh, the creation of an innovation hub as uh, we want to pursue a sector that is driven not only by the role of the new technologies, but also by distributed generation. But those are the strategies regarding to the electricity sector. For the hydrocarbon sector, we want to position Panama as an energy hub, a sustainable energy hub. And there is where the green hydrogen strategy comes to alive. We have been working with different stakeholders in order to design this uh, roadmap to position Panama as the global green hydrogen road due to the construction of a wide variety of policy instruments, regulatory framework, and the promotion of investment, not only in um, infrastructure for storage green hydrogen and the derivatives, but also for the production of green hydrogen in our territory, as well to provide logistic services that offer low greenhouse gas emissions. So this is very important to have into consideration to apply to this green hydrogen economy a circular economy where Panama wants to position. In this regard, uh, we have been evaluating um, the amount of green hydrogen that is being produced right now, the amount of green hydrogen that is going to be produced in 2030 and 2050, and from the different scenarios, we see that around the 30% of that green hydrogen has to pass through the Panama Canal. We designed this strategy thinking in what is the role that the Panama Canal is going to play within this new uh, chip of the energy geopolitics and there is um, why we create uh, different elements 
from the green hydrogen transformative hub that we want to implement in our country. And to do that, we create two committees, the uh, high level green hydrogen committee and the technical committee in order to make this process inclusive. And here you can see how you can um, imagine how we are imagine uh, the transformative green hydrogen hub will look in Panama, taking into consideration that we are a route for excellence uh, to transport uh, different resources and that right now the 29% of fossil fuels in the world pass through the Panama Canal, we want to do the same with green hydrogen, ammonia, e kerosene, and so on, not only um, creating different incentives for that, but also having a green hydrogen free zones in the country to storage it and to shift that uh, green hydrogen to the other different um, energy carriers, but also including um, the production within our territory using our solar resources, our wind resources to do so. And also, one of the things that are um, and have more attraction and more economic value for us is the implementation of the green hydrogen bunkering. As in Panama, we serve uh, fuel in the Atlantic and in the Pacific, we are preparing ourselves to do so also with uh, this new energy vector. But not only that, we um, are going to strengthen our green hydrogen roadmap and to convert that into a strategy that is going to be launched at the end of this year, including the update of our legal and regulatory framework to um, foment uh, the implementation and the creation of a new change of logistic specifically for this type of energy vector. Having said that, we are also including in our roadmap the certifications and standards that are not only going to comply with the Panamanian requirement, but also uh, European and Latin American requires as well, having also into consideration that uh, right now, Panama, the different um, private sector investors with the support of the Panamanian government uh, designing the construction of um, a storage and distribution facility and also evaluating the uh, perfectibility study of a pipeline that connect uh, the Pacific and the Atlantic with uh, green hydrogen. And having said that, you know that um, education, awareness creation as research is one of the things that has to come with the growth of the green hydrogen market. So we are designing the implementation of a resource center uh, for green hydrogen in coordination with the Technological University of Panama as well as the Technological University of Munich and we are creating different awareness uh, campaigns um, to foment and to get in love with uh, green hydrogen technology and knowledge. It's also uh, important to highlight that we are ambitioning uh, one of our first pilot projects in for green hydrogen in mobility that is going to be located in the city of knowledge. And we are um, planning this strategy not only to do green bunkering, not only preparing ourselves to support the chief of fuels in the aviation sector, but also we do believe that there is a great opportunity for use uh, green hydrogen in the domestic sector, mainly in the industry and uh, in the transport sector, the heavy duty vehicles. Um, we are preparing a pilot also for that. And and also to include uh, um, green ammonia in our agricultural sector. This is what we have for today. I hope that this intervention has generated a few questions from your side. If you want to have more information about what Panama is doing regarding green hydrogen, please uh, send me an email at lindo at uh, energia.gov.com. So thank you.
Um, a big thanks to Rosalina, who's really always, always available. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here with us, but I can assure you she's a great friend of uh, uh, um, uh, European partners. Uh, and uh, she's a great friend of also of uh, uh, our uh, panelists uh, uh, here. So uh, please count on her uh, for anything you may need in, uh, in Panama. So... Um, well, before we go into the um, questions, maybe a first round of applause, because uh, I think we all enjoyed uh, uh, the presentations. And, uh, uh, and as I said, really, uh, Central America is a region that lives the story of decarbonization, innovation, and evolution in the business environment, different perspectives, but all really extremely exciting and interesting for uh, us, for European partners. And uh, as we heard during the introduction of this event, really with a very strong link to uh, the partnership established by our uh, cooperation, uh, our association agreement. So um, I now really need you from the floor, including uh, um, panelists and uh, um, people who already take the floor, uh, because we need to give some kick to uh, the discussion. And uh, uh, I count on your questions. So I don't know whether Olmo can help us out with the micro. Yeah, and uh, please go ahead. I would like to take at least uh, uh, three or four questions in the first round. Please don't be shy. And I don't know whether there's any question online. And here, yeah. First question, name and question, short question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Does it work? Yeah. Uh, my name is Boris Westphal from uh, the company Donier Suntrace. We are an infrastructure uh, consultant um, it's with a particular specialization on renewables. And I'm familiar with uh, Costa Rica for over 30 years now, uh, working also on the energy sector. Así que me permito eh, poner la pregunta en, en español. Eh, se dirige al señor uh, Marco Aruña, eh, que disfruté mucho de su presentación, como la de las, las otras. Eh, y tengo una específica pregunta que siempre me he cuestionado cuando conociendo Costa Rica y el sector eléctrico, eh, y yo tengo la, digamos, eh, ocupación de energías renovables, en particular la solar. Um, ¿Cómo ve usted las posibilidades de, opcio, de, de la opción de desarrollar eh, la energía solar fotovoltaica a gran escala, sobre todo en el norte de Costa Rica, viendo a los aspectos que tiene mucha hidroelectricidad, que es el almacén natural en la red, que es excelente en el país, y sería un complemento natural, y en particularmente ahora, Eh, que, que se ha hecho tan barata la energía solar, que es una de las más baratas formas de producir electricidad como la eólica en, hoy en día. ¿Cómo ve usted las posibilidades de, digamos, darle un empujón a energía solar a gran escala? Sobre todo que Costa Rica ya está cubierto con 100%, pero con las perspectivas que, que ven usted um, en cuanto a movilidad eléctrica o producción y de hidrógeno o algo así, uh, sería necesario tener más capacidades. ¿no? Muchas gracias. Muchísimas gracias. Tomamos dos eh, preguntas más. ¿Y ¿Hay preguntas online, tal vez? Aún no. Sí, yo quisiera preguntar. Sí. Por favor, adelante. Hola, mi nombre es Sergio González. My name is Sergio González. I'm a Costa Rican citizen and head of uh, Aqua Diamond Group. We are a aquaculture company. And uh, this uh, question is to my uh, countryman. I would like to find out what is really the um, position of the Costa Rican government uh, regarding production of green hydrogen. Uh, we have developed in the past 25 years a technology called uh, RAS YPT uh, is the aquaculture technology that allow us to have two products as waste. Okay, I have to look for something to do with these products. One is biofertilizers and the second is green hydrogen. Everybody has the problem of production, the price of production. I produce it and it's a waste product for me. 
I have approached to uh, Vice President uh, Brunner, and I have presented my project because I'm looking for a house, either Panama, Costa Rica, uh, considering Salvador as well, maybe Guatemala. And but basically, um, one thing it is what I'm uh, trying to seek, and is uh, the position of the government of the production, because uh, I think that I already explained this to the government, and they they don't care that I produce it for basically nothing. I sell it for one penny, I'm making money. But um, tell me, what is the reality of the production in Costa Rica? Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much. Um, maybe another question possibly on a different country, maybe besides Costa Rica. Yeah, thank you so much. Hello, good morning, everyone. My name is Jens Kompar from Reventure GmbH. We are a solar developer and um, pretty much already working on Guatemala and exploring possibilities. My question is in reference to the upcoming tender where we're seeing 238 megawatt approximately being tendered out of which half of it is going to be basically load. So potencia. Mike, obviously solar can only produce not potencia, but um, would therefore only be the half of the, the 238 megawatts. My question is how you would treat battery and storage combination with solar, would that be subject to potencia or would that be still subject to solar? Because obviously I doubt that you would put up a battery that would enable you to produce 24 seven. So my question is exactly that, thank you. Very, very interesting question. So I would start with these first three questions. Um, Don Marco, uh, so for the first question regarding plants, uh, um, extensive solar, uh, solar, and the question from the uh, participants on the green hydrogen plants. Thank you. Thank you for for the questions. Um, yeah, solar is a it's an it's an option uh, right now. It's not needed because the the demand is covered. Actually, we have uh, like five, seven plants disconnected from the grid because we don't have uh, enough demand for them. And we have the, the, the company, and my company has the resources for providing the energy to the, to the customers. Uh, so for us, it's, most, uh, it's, more, it's more cost effective to uh, provide our electricity than purchasing that electricity and selling that, that electricity. And that's why we are working on working very hard on uh, decarbonization of the of the economy. Uh, we are looking at the demand. So uh, right now I have I have good news, and is that uh, um, two or three companies are moving moving towards uh, the. Uh, replacing fossil fuels for industrial processes demanding huge amount of energy that would that would increase the the need for more electricity and and provide um room for the plants plants disconnected and also uh, for decarbonizing the economy we need like 10,000 15,000 megawatts in the in the coming 20 years 25 years so um Definitely, there, there will be room for solar. That's something we haven't exploited yet, uh, but we have a huge uh, potential for that. Uh, there are a few uh, small plants now, five megawatt maximum. Uh, and uh, in the future, actually, in our, in our planning, uh, there are 40, 50 megawatt plants, uh, solar uh, plant for coming years after 2025, I think. But that's something related with the economy uh, growing and foreign foreign investment and, and, and a lot of uh, factors uh, who defines the need for more power. Uh, we are now uh, building a, a geothermal plant, a 55 megawatt. Uh, that's a three, $300 million investment, uh, but that's base, uh, base generation. And solar is more uh, um, variable, and we have the complement for making, um, uh, you know, for 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 uh, covering the demand uh, with firm and variable 
uh, electricity, but we are looking that more in coming two or three years to be happening uh, if the demand grows. Uh, this year it's growing like 4%. Uh, well, based on last year where, where we had a pandemic, but it is increasing and we're going to have a room for, for more investment on uh, renewables in the country, definitely. Uh, with the, with the, the, the line uh, on decarbonizing, decarbonizing the, the, the economy. Thank yeah, you. no, thank you so much, Don Marco. What, before we answer the question on uh, green hydrogen from uh, uh, the viewer, uh, maybe just uh, stay on uh, solar. So because the second question was also on solar and uh, the uh, bidding process uh, in uh, in Guatemala. Is that just for power or I mean, just for base load or, or um, how does it work really? Um, sí, muchas gracias. Con respecto a la licitación P4, um, los solares pueden participar solo con energía generada, o sea, solo generando energía hasta 40 megas. Si quieren participar en esa opción, pero en Guatemala hay varias opciones de contrato y otra opción es de seguimiento de curva de carga. Entonces un solar podría entrar con la opción de seguimiento de curva de carga teniendo la potencia de otra generación renovable, por ejemplo hidroeléctrica. Entonces se complementan ambas tecnologías y participan en conjunto. Esa es otra opción en la que puede entrar el solar eh, también pues no hay ninguna limitación para que instalen baterías eh, behind the mirror, eh, o sea, no, hoy por hoy todavía no hay una regulación para que haya un, una batería instalada eh, para hacer trading, digamos, en la red, pero sí como respaldo al, al solar, sí puede estar. Entonces, eh, digamos, son las opciones que, que hoy por hoy ya se pueden ver con esta licitación de 235 megavatios que hay que ofertar el próximo año. Eh, también quiero adelantarles que en el año 2024 también el gobierno de Guatemala, la comisión, eh, debe cubrir ya lo, el vencimiento de los contratos de largo plazo anteriores y va a haber una licitación mucho más grande, mayor a mil megas, donde esperamos que ahí el tema pues sea más fuerte la, la, el apetito de los inversionistas. Sí, gracias. Sí, excelente. Sí, lo veo que, espero que esté bien. I hope it's the answer. I think it was good. I mean, it was excellent. <laughs> But of course, uh, maybe if you have uh, another question, we first uh, finish the, uh, um, uh, with, the, with the existing question. And so we switch back to uh, green hydrogen and, uh, and Costa Rica. Because of course, uh, it's a well-known story uh, in, for, in terms of innovation. Uh, the, um, the viewer was asking really how we are moving on regulation on plants, uh, please. Uh, thank you for the question again. Uh, for the other question, where, well, also here is, here is Ronnie, which is the Deputy Minister of, of Energy as well for, for helping me answering this question. Um, well, in the case of, of ISE, we are not close to hydrogen. Uh, that's another option and, and, and other, another customer, possible customer. Um, now I received uh, several companies in my office uh, in Costa Rica um, asking for um, the conditions for implementing a hydrogen plants in the country. Uh, so what we have uh, talked to them is that uh, we have an, an, an limited amount of energy uh, because we also are uh, working on decarbonizing the economy and that's gonna uh, demand uh, new energy and uh, energy we already have uh, and already disconnected, uh, sadly. Um, and they have to some kind and somehow compete with other needs of the country we have a a huge foreign investment uh, so that's asking for more uh, electricity uh, for example intel is expanding in costa rica uh, as only one example so i i uh, me as a as a as a utility we look hydrogen as another as another customer 
So in the um, in 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 the in the in the side of regulation and and the and the country uh, plans, I think Ronnie. I don't know if you can answer this one. Yes, and uh, in a next, yeah, I know, but it's for for answering the for answering the the, the question. Yeah, exactly in this thematic part okay. of the regulation Great. of hydrogen as well. Great. So. Um, so that's 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 the answer. We well, now we have a, a tariff of seven point five cents. Uh, that's a minimum tariff we have, uh, seven point five cents uh, in high voltage, and we have a uh, minimum eight cents in medium voltage. That's our lowest tariffs, uh, and using one hundred percent renewable. So I think that's uh, that's a bargain. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, and and yes, and we are open for for uh, customers who need to yeah. to electrolyze, but uh, it has to compete with other customers as well. Excellent. Now, unfortunately, time is not on our side. Uh, I would suggest that we close this first uh, uh, panel here. Um, maybe for um, I leave it to uh, Christian to decide um, uh, about the coffee break. But thank you so much for uh, your wonderful participation and uh, um, look forward to the next panel. Thank you so much, everybody.